So good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining this talk. Today we are going to talk about uh, novel model inversion attribute inference attacks on classification models, and I am Shagufta Mehenas uh, from the Pennsylvania State University, and this is a joint work uh, with collaborators from Dartmouth College and Purdue University. So let's first see uh, what a model inversion attack is. Um, with the increasing use of ML technologies in our lives uh, nowadays, we frequently train these models on sensitive training data sets, um, which includes personal information, health records, confidential financial data, and so on. So these models are often trained and hosted by big tech companies, and the users can query these models on a paper query basis. Um, though uh, there exists many um, privacy preserving techniques that preserve the privacy of the data while training, uh, it may seem that once the model is trained, we are good in terms of privacy. But uh, the idea of model inversion attack is this makes this one-way journey from training data to model to a two-way one, which is um, given the access to the model, an adversary can intelligently query this model and reveal some of the sensitive training data sets or, or the sensitive attributes in the training data set. Um, so the access of the adversary could be of different types, for example, white box access, black box access, but we focus in this work on only the black box access, which is a more practical assumption uh, for the threat model. So uh, the main research question that we address in this research is, is it possible for an adversary to estimate the sensitive attributes in the training data set by having only the black box query access to the model? Um, so we divide the model inversion attacks uh, in a high level two different types. The first one is typical instance reconstruction, which applies mostly to the image domain, which is much studied, uh, where the adversary tries to reconstruct a representative image of the actual one uh, that doesn't have to be the, exactly the same as the actual image. And then uh, there is the second type of model inversion attack that is model inversion attribute inference attack where the goal is to reconstruct the exact value of the sensitive attribute. And this applies to mainly the non-image domain, uh, mostly in the tabular data sets, which includes medical records, financial data, social survey data, and so on. So our focus in this work is in the second type of model inversion attack, that is sensitive attribute inference. Okay, so I will follow an example. Uh, this is uh, the general social survey data set, um, which is obtained by having a survey on the individuals where we ask different questions uh, to the individuals and they, uh, they, they, they respond to these questions which also include some sensitive information. So let's say that we want to train a model uh, to predict the marital happiness of the individuals where the classes could be not too happy, pretty happy and very happy as you can see in the last column. And uh, the rest of the columns are the X which is the uh, input attributes to the model. So once this model is trained, uh, of course, you want to query this model with um, the answers of the individuals to the other questions which belong to the X part. And maybe you can, um, the model can output the confidence scores. Uh, here you can see that the confidence score for the very happy class is the highest. The model could also output only the label, not the confidence scores, but we will take a look at this in the next slides. So if you look at um, the X, the training data, there could be very sensitive attributes. For example, here we can see that the individuals were asked for a question of like whether they watched any X-rated movies in the last one year. So this is a sensitive information. And of course, when we train the model, we don't want an adversary to reconstruct what an individual answered to this question. It's, this is a privacy violation. Um, so let's take a closer look at the existing attacks and defenses. Um, so if we look at the existing attacks, they heavily depend on the confidence scores uh, that are output by the model. Uh, and in response to that, there has been a number of research that tries to propose defenses. So one of the defense proposes that um, you reduce the precision of the confidence scores. Um, some propose to uh, remove the confidence scores, just the highest one, uh, just revealing the highest one. And also there are defenses for uh, sensitive attribute inference where you perturb the confidence scores so that the adversary cannot uh, perform a gradient-based attack. So what we did is that we wanted to see what if 
the model does not output the confidence scores at all and only the labels. So we wanted to design a label-only model in version attribute inference attack which assumes least access uh, or least knowledge of the adversary while attacking the target models. So we call this uh, attack Lomia. So I will give you a quick intuition of how this attack works. Uh, so this is the target model as we talked about it. So x1 through xn are the input attributes, y is the output attribute. So without loss of generality, we assume that x1 is the sensitive attribute that the adversary is interested in um, reconstructing. And so in our attack, uh, we train an attack model which, is, which takes uh, input the non-sensitive attributes x2 through xn and y and tries to predict the sensitive attribute value, which is the x1. So here, for the simplicity, I assume that there is just one sensitive attribute, but in the paper, we consider multiple sensitive attributes where x1, x2, x3, all three could be sensitive attributes that the adversary is trying to uh, predict. And also, we uh, take instances where the sensitive attributes could be multi-valued, not only the binary. So, so far, the existing attacks have only looked at one sensitive attribute, only binary ones, so we wanted to see how our attack uh, expands to these scenarios as well. So, um, as I said that we have an attack model, so the next question is how do we train the attack model? So we assume that the adversary has access to some instances, but of course it does not know the X movie column of the instances because this is the attribute value that they want to deconstruct. And let's say that we take an instance from this uh, available data set that is available to the adversary, and then it um, queries the target model which predicts the happiness, uh, marital happiness uh, for individuals, and then it tries with all possible values of the sensitive attributes, that is x no and x yes for this uh, typical example. So as you can see that with x no, um, the model outputs the correct uh, marital happiness that is very happy, and uh, with um, a different attribute, it says pretty happy, which is not the actual label of the uh, instance. So from here, the adversary can estimate x no to be the sensitive attribute value. So with um, the data set that it has, it queries the model uh, multiple times, and then it tries to estimate the sensitive attribute value for all the instances that it has access to. So once uh, it does, through, it goes through this process, it obtains um, this data set where on the left side you have all the non-sensitive attributes and the right side has the sensitive attribute. So this, this way uh, the adversary obtains the attack model training data set and finally trains the attack model that it can use for any new instance to perform the attack. So as I said, um, the, how this uh, a strategy executes. Once you have an instance you want to predict the sensitive attribute for, you just query the attack model and it predicts uh, the sensitive attribute for you. So we don't have to access um, the target model anymore while we are performing the attack. So the attack, once we train the attack model, we, are, we can use it for the sensitive attribute inference. Um, so for the experiment setup, we used three real data sets, uh, the general social survey, that example that I gave, uh, the adult data set, uh, 538 data sets, uh, these are used in the existing research as well. Also, we um, trained different types of ML models to understand the generalizability of our attack. So we used decision tree models and deep neural network models. Also, we used the BigML platform for training these models, and um, which is, uh, again, a big tech company that provides this ML as a service systems and make the models public once these are trained. Um, so if we look at the attack results, um, so the paper has many results. So this is a concise version of the results. Uh, this is um, the general social survey data set result where the sensitive attribute is whether the individuals watched the X-rated movies. And we present the results for both decision tree and deep neural network. So if we compare our results with the existing work, we can see that our attack is more stable when we change the type of model. So the FJR MIA existing attack didn't perform well when we uh, went to the deep neural network models. It was designed, uh, not designed, but it was evaluated in decision tree models. Um, also, these are the results for the adult data set where the sensitive attribute is the marital status. So the adversary is trying to uh, predict the marital status of the individuals in the data set. 
So we can also see that our uh, attacks outperform um, the existing attack. We also have some baseline attacks, for example, random attacks and naive attacks in our paper, but I'm not going through all that here. So please uh, go through the paper if you're interested. Uh, so one uh, interesting phenomenon that we observed uh, in our uh, experiments is that, so all these ma machine learning privacy attacks are evaluated on the overall training data set. So we wanted to see whether um, this is a good way to evaluate uh, the ML privacy attacks. So we looked at uh, how this attack performs on different subgroups. For example, if we divide the uh, training data set in terms of the gender, whether the attacks are similar over these two subgroups. But we saw that there exists this disparity. Uh, the female individuals were, for the female individuals, the attack accuracy was around 85%, whereas for the male ones, it was around 60%. So it, 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 it is um, a more concerning thing because privacy should be uh, equal for each individual, and here we can see that it's not. So even if after an attack we see that the accuracy is not that high, it's, it's not that we, we have preserved the privacy of everyone. We have to look at each individual or the subgroups to understand the vulnerability. So we, uh, we observed this uh, phenomenon not only in terms of gender, but also we saw that uh, disparity for different races. So for example, the black race was more vulnerable than the white race. Also in terms of religions, we saw that there is a clear difference among uh, the subgroups. There are more results uh, also where we can see that in terms of occupations, there are different vulnerabilities. For education levels, there are different vulnerabilities. Um, also, we conducted some experiments where we tried to reduce uh, the knowledge of the adversary. So um, we reduced the knowledge of non-sensitive attributes as well for the adversary to see how our attack extends to this partial knowledge attack. But we uh, saw that the attack performance did not degrade much when uh, increasingly more non-sensitive attributes became unavailable to the adversary. So as you can see that we removed one through nine uh, non-sensitive attributes from the adversary's knowledge, but we can see that the precision recall and FN score of our attacks did not degrade much. So this, is, this uh, shows another um, uh, threat, because in, in real life, the adversary might not know all the non-sensitive attributes, but even with that knowledge, it's possible to perform very powerful attacks and reconstruct the sensitive attributes in the data sets. Um, so to conclude, uh, we um, designed a novel model version attack strategy, which is uh, designed for the black box access, and also we reduced it to only label only. We show, uh, we show this uh, disparate vulnerability phenomenon, and also where we reduce the non-sensitive non attribute access of the adversary. Uh, we experimented with different ML model types to check the generalizability of our attacks, and there are much more results in the paper. Uh, if you're interested, please take a look at that. And with that, um, I wanted to share with you that the code and data sets and all the models are available on um, our uh, GitHub website, and the artifact uh, is evaluated for being functional and reproducible, so please feel free. I know that this is the last talk uh, of the conference, but if you have questions, feel free to email me to further discuss. So I'd be happy to take any questions at this point, and thank you all for listening.